Let me tell you a story about my single most embarrassing moment on live television. And it starts with this awkward piece of audio that I shared with you at the end of the last episode. Your name, your name. It's all of so much love. (laughs) It still makes me cringe to hear that moment. I watch the video back from that television appearance often now, and it's still excruciating to watch. I wish I could tell you things like that get easier. They don't. You just get better at assessing those kinds of things for the lessons that you can learn. And boy, have there been some lessons I've learned about myself and about all of us when we're confronted by the lens of a camera, just like I was there. You see, at that time, I was 16 years into my radio broadcasting career, but I had this secret little goal that I wanted to be the next Katrina Roundtree or a person who could be called upon to do travel stories and get sent all over the world. I just had this idealized form of an idea in my head about how I wanted to take my career. And when I got the opportunity to do something completely different to travel presenting, instead to cross live on TV, on a TV show called The Project. You might have heard about it here in Australia. It's a news and current affairs program. I had my news background, so I was feeling pretty confident about that. But here's the thing. I had never at that stage been live on television before. And so I'm sitting there with this attachment to an outcome, which was along the lines of becoming the next person who's known for being a TV travel presenter and attaching that to the success of my live cross on TV for a completely different kind of piece of content, right? This is a news show. It had nothing to do with lifestyle presenting. And I made so many mistakes that night that led to me speaking these words of utter gibberish on live TV. Your name, your name. It's all of so much love. For a start, I planned, based on this ridiculous outcome that I'd become famous and land a great new lifestyle travel or travel television presenting job, I'd planned myself like 90 seconds of content. But if you've ever seen the segment that I was on, it's called The Whip and it happened at the end of the project. If you've ever seen that segment, you'll know that they go right around the country. And if you're from Perth, you'll know that their presenter that they have waiting to cross from Perth is often thrown to last. I told this story once in Darwin and they pointed out, oh, well, at least you guys are in the whip or the segment on TV that runs around the country. So you've probably seen it before. They go to a presenter in Brisbane, then they go to a presenter in Sydney, someone else in Adelaide. And all of these presenters, just like me, were people from radio stations who were getting their shot on live TV. And do you know what happened? They all ran long because as you can hear, people like me who are used to working in radio, we're not afraid of saying a few words. So all of these people run long and I have rehearsed to an nth degree my 90 seconds that I'm going to do on camera and I had become immovable. I'd gotten to a stage where I didn't have the capacity to improvise like I might have done on radio. And when the director in Sydney came into my ear before I was due to go live on air, he said, listen, you can only do 30 seconds. We are running late and the show ends 30 seconds after we throw to you. You must finish. Now, I wish I could say to you that with my 16 years of radio broadcasting history, I was able to edit what I'd planned to do on the fly. But like I said, I've just explained to you all that attachment to it, an extra outcome was making me more nervous than ever. I was so scared of making a mistake that I stuck to my script that needed 90 seconds minimum to deliver because truth be told, I was probably planning to run over a bit like all of my colleagues around the country who ran long ahead of me. I couldn't change what I'd planned to say. And this moment where I speak all that gibberish your name, your name, it's all of so much love. Is the moment when the director comes into my earpiece and says, gotta go, wrap it up. And you'll hear afterwards the presenter, Carrie Bickmore, over in Sydney, a West Australian girl just like me, who I was desperate to connect with, 
says, thanks, Carmen, we'll go now. And they wrap up the entire show while I am still battling to speak. You know, for years, like I said, I never, ever, ever watched that performance on TV. I was embarrassed. I knew that it had gone badly. I was so nervous that I know that I shouted the whole way through it. There are all kinds of things that made it terrible, not the least of which that gibberish moment where I lost the capacity to speak English because I was not just nervous, I was ill-prepared and I was focused on all the wrong things. There are a lot of people out there who say that public speaking is more scary than death. In fact, Jerry Seinfeld tells this amazing joke where he talks about how based on that stat that more people are scared of public speaking than death, you can assume at your average funeral, the person, most people in the audience would rather be the one in the box than having to do the eulogy, which is pretty incredible, I know. But to people who say that public speaking is the most frightening thing on earth, I say, you've never been alone with yourself and a camera. A camera is so much more terrifying. In today's media landscape, options abound. From traditional platforms like TV and radio to the digital realm, social media, online publications and podcasts, just like this one. I'm Carmen Braidwood, your guide to the rapid changes in the modern media space. Whether you're a personal brand or corporate entity, staying relevant is key. Join me, a seasoned TV and radio presenter, content creator and modern media trainer as we navigate this dynamic terrain together. Let's do this. So welcome back to Modern Media. That story I shared with you before the show opener is one of my favourites to draw out in great lengthy detail and share on stages as a workshop presenter at conferences. You see, I love, 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 love to make myself vulnerable and share this excruciating moment now with my audience to share with them that I know how it feels to have a piece of content in front of you that you just wish no one else could see or that you simply cannot bear to watch. I know how it feels when you record something on your phone or someone comes into your workplace and records you doing something and then you are faced with the prospect of watching it back because I've absolutely been there. But you've got to start somewhere and I hope that you can tell from hearing that story about my own moment of realisation that that camera, when it's put in front of you, can rob you of all of your natural-born charisma, it can rob you of years of hard-earned expertise and it can reduce you to absolute water even if you are extremely experienced already at what you do. It is universal and anyone who says that a person is a natural at it is wrong. I'm here to tell you that like most talent-based activities, things like sport, things like music, things like performing on stage, it is a learned skill. Speaking on camera and being your most expertise, natural self, the you who's sitting in their genius zone, that actually takes practice. And the more practice you do, the better you get. And you should look at that as a thing that gives you confidence, that gives you a bit of hope that if you do get started, you are going to get better and you're going to improve and you can learn to do this thing. There's no such thing as a natural. Here's another story. Back at the start of the teens, is that what we call it? Around 2011 anyway, I met a chiropractor and he asked me to teach him to speak on camera the same way I did back then for a local travel show. And look, I know that this particular chiropractor now is using video to grow his business day in, day out. I taught him back then, even though I really didn't understand the benefits of content marketing, it was still the early days, right? I taught him to do things like create a video to teach his patients to stretch out their backs so that they can extend the amount of time in between their appointments. I taught him to educate his audience about the benefits of his craft, chiropractic, so that they could come in and feel confident about making an appointment without all those questions bubbling away in their mind that usually stop us from doing things like that. And like I said, I even said to him, hang on, if you give away all this expertise on the internet for free, 
won't people stop coming to see you? And he could see, and obviously he'd been informed by then, that the opposite is true. This kind of content, sharing your expertise, podcasting, video content, anything where you educate and demonstrate your ability to bring value to an audience member, it's going to only benefit your business. And he knew that if he gave people a quick win while they're scrolling through social media, even a short hit of entertainment, they would then attribute that win with him and they'd come to him when they truly were stuck. It's a great strategy and it's been working for a long time now and I know that people continue to come into this chiropractor's clinic who've seen him on the internet, who've seen his videos online because he's my husband. (laughs) Another fun story that I love to share on stages around Australia talking about this journey with confidence on camera. The renowned speaker Simon Sinek says you've got to start with why and that story, the moment on the project I told you about at the start of this episode, they're the things that really contribute to my why around the work I've been doing to facilitate my desire to continue freelancing to the broadcast media as a television presenter, sometimes on radio, and also to facilitate a lifestyle that brings with it a huge amount of freedom. I've learned now that people who are entrepreneurs are people who don't have a job, and I must admit I'm pretty addicted to that lifestyle. After 17 years of presenting breakfast radio shows or producing breakfast radio shows or reading news on breakfast radio shows, you get the trend there. I was out of bed at, you know, sort of three, four o'clock in the morning for that whole time. So, and I was bound to the radio stations that I worked with. It meant that I could only take holidays at certain times of year and it just meant there was a lot of inflexibility. So now that I get to stay flexible and enjoy the benefits that come from that, it's been an incredible change to my career. So it's a huge part of my why, those two particular stories. And today, helping other highly experienced people share their expertise with the rest of the world so that they can enjoy all of those benefits is honestly the best thing about the work I get to do. Like, why would you let a little thing like a camera lens hold you back from helping others, from creating change that you want to see in the world or doing good in the world? We've all got a particular cause that we're passionate about. We've got elements of our business that speak to a greater purpose. If you empower yourself to share those stories, and I love to help you do that, or if we train your people so that they can share your business story, the why behind what you do, then the impact you can have is really great. So denying people access to your expertise through sharing your knowledge and skills in video and audio content on the internet is almost a travesty. It's time to get it out there. It's the only true way to make big impact. So I've shared with you there the reasons why I do what I do and why I created the Confidence on Camera program around 2020. And there's a little more storytelling I can go into for you there. But, you know, there were some things as I shared with you in episode one that held me back from making this training business of mine a reality. There was the day that I was axed from my long running radio show here in Perth. We'd been on air together for seven years, the time that I'd been there. And Uh, We were axed overnight, so I had a whole lot of fear around not being good enough at what I did. There was my health concerns and grief over not becoming a biological parent like I shared with you last episode. But I had this knowledge. I knew that based on my hubby's experience making video to grow socials for his business, that there was a place for what I was calling back then media skills in the business world. I just didn't really know how to sell it. So how did I get through? Well, as I like to say, confidence on camera saved me and it saved my house. (laughs) So all my freelance TV presenting work, my MC work that I was doing to pay the bills after I lost my job in radio dried up in 2020. As you know, the pandemic hit and I was faced with a whole lot of uncertainty. The added thing was that I was working then on a talkback radio show on the weekends. It was a freelance gig. And I felt like my job was in jeopardy because I was living with those three chronic illnesses. The virus was so unknown and scary back then. And I had to ask my boss to make special allowance for me to do the radio show from home 
you know, and it was really funny. I was such a people pleaser back then and I probably still am, but my fear of being viewed as difficult to work with, you know, that really reared its head because I just didn't want to make it hard for the radio station to keep me on air. You know, my fear was that I'd lose my job again. And even though I know that that's a reality of the industry that I'm in and that we shouldn't take it personally, it was pretty hard not to. But then the best thing happened. I worked with a coach who helped me clear that imposter syndrome I had about positioning myself as a person who could help business owners, entrepreneurs, professionals show up on camera and position themselves as a go-to authority in their market. You know, because I was still sitting there thinking, oh, but my TV experience isn't enough. And I've had these awkward experiences on TV. I hadn't realized that those experiences had only given me more lived experiences that I could share with my clients and help them. I didn't realize it was so much value. And it still really blows my mind how hard it can be for us to see this kind of value in ourselves. If you're ever going through this kind of those low moments where you're thinking, is it really worth it? Why am I doing this? The content grind day in, day out. Is it really worth my time? It can really help to try and tap into that value and see it in yourself. And what happened then is that I stepped out of my media career and worked with leaders from new industries. And what I soon realized is how much I already knew that could help my ideal client. I realized how much more valuable my expertise could be outside of my industry than it was within. I also tapped into the knowledge that time is the new rich. And one of the ways that I was able to really capitalize on this was after my weekend radio show had come to an end, yep, another show that bit the dust, I was able to take time off, genuine time off. Ryan and I, we jumped in the car, we did extended travel around Western Australia in our caravan, and we could both make plans anytime we wanted throughout the year to do literally anything we wanted. And the coolest thing about this is that I was still able to work. You know, I've been a sole trader since I used to host murder mystery parties in my early 20s. And even without that full-time work in the media, I still had my biggest earning year, like biggest earning year ever in 20 odd years of freelancing in 2021. And the really cool things that I have learned in this period of time that I've been both freelancing and building a business where I'm helping individuals as a coach, as a media trainer, and as a modern media trainer, a person who can help you navigate these digital platforms and use them to do the same thing we used to rely on traditional media for. We can use them to tell stories that the media, that traditional media, TV and radio shows used to simply say no to. We can go niche. We can really drill down to the specifics and target a very niche audience. If you want to only talk to women who've experienced early menopause like I have, then you literally can look for those people specifically on the internet and speak directly to them. That's what I've realized is so exciting about modern media and what we've got at our fingertips. We can still leverage the opportunity to show up on TV and radio and do all that awesome PR, but there's just so much we can do for free using an item that is literally at our fingertips. Your phone is almost like having an entire TV network. Now, forget a TV network, an entire media company at your fingertips. You can be the curator of the content. You can weave your story in there and you can target the exact people that you want to talk to. And that's what's so exciting. So that's the story of how I created the Confidence on Camera program that saved my bacon and my house, if I'm entirely honest, but also unlocked the ability for literally thousands of sole traders, entrepreneurs, business owners and professionals to start showing up as their authentic selves on camera, share their expertise, share their genius zone and promote themselves for free on the internet. And I'm really proud that I've been able to do that. But there's a next step to the process. Once you're showing up on camera, once you're able to tell your story authentically from your point of view on camera and post that video to the internet, there's a next step. It's being a modern media performer. It's showing up in so many more places than just on camera. And 
to illustrate that point and the importance of being a modern media performer in this day and age, I'm going to take you back to 2017 when my co-host on radio and I went from front page news to probably a story that we would have both preferred be buried somewhere deep inside in really, really tiny print that no one else can read. Around the time that I was booted off that radio show, I was scared of going out there and speaking on stages. I'll see you next episode here on Modern Media. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Carmen Braidwood, your guide to navigating the ever-changing world of media. Dive deeper into today's topics, you can check out the show notes or for more details about modern media training, head to carmenbraidwood.com.au. Until next time, keep on shining in the modern media landscape.